In this episode, our review of the Sennheiser AVX wireless lavalier system. This entire episode is being recorded with the AVX system from Sennheiser with the MKE2 lavalier microphone into a Zoom F8 field recorder. In some of the previous episodes that we did some of the preliminary tests, we actually recorded into a Panasonic GH4 and we'll link to those here in just a second. Paul Figani over at Produce New Media made an interesting observation when he said just recently, if there's a microphone test, you probably don't want to do very much processing at all. In fact, do as little as possible. In that light, this episode is not as loud as some of the others you <laughs> normally see. We've done that intentionally. This is only loudness normalized to minus 24 LUFS. Normally we go to about minus 16. The reason we've done that here is that we want you to be able to hear how the microphones sound pretty much directly out of the recorder. First, let's have a listen to the sound quality of the MKE2 and AVX system relative to the Rode Link wireless system. Here are some audio samples from both the AVX with the MKE2 lavalier microphone and from the Rode Link Filmmaker Kit, which includes the Rode lavalier. I have both of them mounted just here on my chest, pretty much center here. And in both cases, we're recording into the Zoom F8. Just wanted to give you a sample of what they each sound like. Here are some audio samples from both the AVX with the MKE2 lavalier microphone and from the Rode Link Filmmaker Kit, which includes the Rode lavalier. I have both of them mounted just here on my chest, pretty much center here. And in both cases, we're recording into the Zoom F8. Just wanted to give you a sample of what they each sound like. I like the sound of the MKE2. It's a little bit bright, uh, but I think overall it sounds more balanced and more natural and more detailed than the Rode Lavalier. It also comes with these little protective caps, which not only protect the capsule of the microphone, but also sculpt the sound a little bit. So if you're hiding the microphone under your shirt, for example, that can help bring back some of the high frequency sound that's lost as the sound has to travel through the shirt. The AVX system transmits audio at 24 bit, 48 kilohertz, so it's very high quality audio. And it also encrypts at 256 bit AES encryption. So there's not a lot of chance that someone could listen in on your recording. Sennheiser touts the dynamic range of the AVX system, and what that means in practical terms is that it's able to capture much louder sounds without distorting relative to a lot of other systems. Now, here I don't think it's just dynamic range. Technically, they call it that, but I think it's actually doing some sort of compression or limiting. Not entirely sure on that. Regardless of how it works, it works very nicely. I highly recommend you go take a look at our previous test where we looked at that specifically. Works very well and it can save your shoot. If suddenly your talent gets very loud, you're not going to clip and distort like you typically would on most other systems. We also did another test where we took the AVX system along with the Rode Link into a very Wi-Fi heavy environment and tested to see how well both of them stood up. We had 10 different Wi-Fi networks, at least there are probably more. And we had our talent walk up to about 50 meters away from the camera and we didn't have any dropouts due to Wi-Fi interference on either system actually, but including the AVX. The AVX actually operates at 1880 to 1930 megahertz, so it doesn't actually compete with Wi-Fi. It's in a different frequency, but uh, we didn't run into any sort of interference of any sort. In that same test, we had mobile phones with all the radios turned on and did not experience any sort of radio frequency interference from those either. Same with the Rode Link system. Can you record with multiple AVX kits at the same time? The answer is yes. You can use up to eight of them simultaneously in the United States. And in Europe, you can use up to 12 of them simultaneously. Not sure why there's a difference. The AVX receiver has an XLR output, so you can plug it directly into your camera, professional level cameras with XLR inputs or into a proper XLR based field recorder. It also has an XLR to 3.5 millimeter adapter. So you can also record into any camera that has a 3.5 millimeter microphone input. With the Sennheiser AVX, it has a 3.5 millimeter input on the transmitter with a locking plug, typical Sennheiser locking plug. That is a 3.5 millimeter TRS input, which means that you could also use other microphones. For example, the Countryman B6, which we reviewed a little while back, you could use that with this system as well. However, the MKE2 is a rather nice mic. It is a little bit on the bright side for my personal preference, 
but it works well for many voices. For mine, it's a little bit, captures a little too much sibilance, um, so it's not my number one choice, but it's pretty good. I really like it. It definitely sounds more open and more natural and more detailed than the Rode Lavalier, which comes with the Rode Link system. The build quality is top notch. The body of the transmitter and receiver are both metal, with some exceptions. The batteries are both plastic, and the antenna are plastic as well. They have to be so that the signal can uh, communicate between the two units. Is there latency with this system? And what I mean by that, is there a delay from the time that sound is produced and it's actually recorded to either your camera or field recorder? The answer is yes, there is some latency. 19 milliseconds is the spec from Sennheiser. In practical terms, what's happening there is the sound is coming in through the microphone, goes to the transmitter. The transmitter has to, first of all, convert it to a digital signal from an analog signal. Then it has to encrypt it, sends it to the receiver. The receiver has to decrypt it, convert it back to analog, and then send it to the camera or recorder. That takes some time, and that's where you get the 19 millisecond latency. However, in practical terms, when I was recording to my Panasonic GH4 directly, I found that it actually synced perfectly. So technically, 19 milliseconds, if you're shooting at 24p, should be about half a frame. So it could be up to half a frame off. Battery life is quite good with the Sennheiser AVX system. I did two tests. In the first test, we got five hours and 23 minutes of transmission time before the battery ran out. And on the second test, four hours and 53 minutes. So pretty good. Uh, definitely in line with some of the other wireless systems that I've used, the quality of wireless systems. So definitely, I think, a usable range there. One question that may come up is, what about the Rode Link? How is this compared to that? Now, I actually own a couple of the Rode Link kits. I use them regularly, quite like them. I think that there are a couple of differentiators here between the Sennheiser AVX and the Rode Link. First of all is the price. You can buy almost three <laughs> Rode Link filmmaker kits with the lavalier mic for the price of one Sennheiser AVX with the MKE-2 microphone. So there's a big difference there, obviously. The build quality, I think, is quite a bit better on the Sennheiser AVX. That alone, would it make it worth all the extra money? Probably not, depending on what you're doing. For professionals, I think they're really going to appreciate the metal body. That can get dropped and thrown around a little bit and still keep on going. The Sennheiser AVX transmitter and receiver are both significantly smaller than Roadlink. So if size is important to you in terms of keeping things very small and compact, the AVX is a little bit better than the Roadlink. Actually, it's quite a bit smaller. In terms of power, it's sort of a trade-off. In the case of the Sennheiser AVX, the batteries are proprietary, so they could make them much smaller. They're also lithium-ion. They can make them much smaller, and they can make the transmitter and receiver much smaller, which is a tremendous benefit for some people, depending on what you're doing. Roadlink, on the other hand, uses AA batteries. And the nice thing about AA batteries is that you get about the same battery life with the tests that I did, and you can pick up AA batteries almost anywhere. The cost, of course, is that Roadlink transmitter and receivers are quite a bit bigger. So if you really are looking for something that's a little bit smaller, you may have to do a trade-off there. In terms of distance and interference, they both did about the same. I would say that the AVX was slightly better than the Roadlink once you had the talent go out of line of sight from the receiver on top of the camera or recorder. Not a ton better. They both really pretty much need to be within line of sight to work effectively and reliably, but about the same. And I think the distance, plenty of distance. I was easily able to get 50 meters on both of them. So that's definitely going to work really, really well for what I'm trying to do. My take on this is that the AVX is really catering to a specific niche. And that specific niche is the solo shooter or the shooter that only has one assistant and they don't have a dedicated sound person. The AVX looks like it would be a really, really good kit for that person. If you don't have someone that can actually do live mixing while you're shooting, and suddenly your talent gets louder, that dynamic range feature should take care of you and save the shoot. Also, the MKE-2 microphone sounds, I think, quite a bit better and more refined and more detailed than the Rode Link lavalier. So there's a trade-off there as well. Overall, the build quality is a little bit better. So again, for professional use where you're using it almost day after day after day, it'll probably hold up longer than a Rode Link would. Will I buy one? I will probably not buy one right now, but I may in the future for now. The Rode Link is serving me just fine, but it's nice to know what the AVX offers, and I think it really offers a compelling package, again, for solo shooters, someone who maybe is doing a documentary where you won't get second takes if something happens and you do clip. So definitely something to keep in mind there. One last note, Sennheiser is very careful to note that the AVX does not replace their G3 wireless system. The G3 is really sort of aimed at 
professionals that will be doing their own mixing. So if you're going to have a dedicated sound person, a G3 may be a better option. You know, it's up to you, of course, but <laughs> they're really sort of aiming the AVX at the solo shooter. So someone that doesn't have time to mess with audio or to manage the audio while they're shooting at the same time. So there's our review of the Sennheiser AVX system. I hope that was helpful for you. Go ahead and leave any questions you have down below. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do that. And we're sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.